All right, today's video, we're going to be looking at CSS custom properties, also known as CSS variables. So the code as usual is linked down in the description so you can edit the live code and play around via the Scrimba site and uh, follow along. CSS tip, we're going to be looking at CSS custom properties. These are also known as CSS variables, and you may or may not have seen these as they've been around and quite popular in the last year or two. I'm going to look at the very basics of these and just give you a couple of little introduction on how powerful they can be. Now, what I want to show you here is that I've got my basic HTML. You can see I've just got three paragraphs. This paragraph has a, has a class of one. This paragraph has this paragraph has a class of two. And then the last one, we're going to be doing an inline style to demonstrate. So three paragraphs. Let's pull up our preview here. And most of our work is going to be as we're doing here in the CSS sheet. So I'll refresh this so we can see those three paragraphs. And let's go ahead and get started. Now, over here on the CSS sheet, we actually have quite a bit we're going to be setting up. Now, we're going to be adding an element here called the root. And this is often you'll see this with CSS custom properties or variables because the root element is where you can declare these, and essentially they're then inherited to all other HTML elements. So what we're going to do is see uh, dash dash. So this is the syntax. So there's two dashes, and then you name your property. Now, you can name it whatever you want, but it has to follow certain conditions. You can't use spaces, things like that. Same basic conventions of naming with your standard CSS class names and ID names. So I'm going to set my first one here to font dash size. And I'm going to set that to 16. Uh, notice that I'm not putting a unit of measure here. And so that's on purpose. And I'll show you why here in a second. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say dash dash. And then I'm going to set this one to font dash, whoops, dash unit. And then I'm going to set this to one point. Okay. Next, I'm going to set this dash dash font dash dyn for dynamic dash size. And this is the reason why I didn't use a unit of measure here is because now we can actually use the CSS calc function, so C-A-L-C, and I can then use those variables I just barely set up. So in order to use the variables, you use the keyword V-A-R for variable, and then two parentheses, and then inside of your parentheses, you simply use the variable name. So dash dash font dash size. Okay, so that's how you would actually use the variable right there. So I'm going to calculate the variable font size times the variable of dash dash font dash unit. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and close that rule off. So you'll see where we're getting here in just a second. And just to kind of do one more little trick here, we'll say dash dash background. So BG for background. And we'll just give this guy a background. Let's do for starting off here one eight one seven one seven. So we're gonna set that up all like so. So now we've declared our variables. Let's go ahead and use them in some CSS. So I'm just gonna open up body tag here, and in this body tag, let's go ahead and set the background color first. So we'll say background dash color. Now instead of just declaring, you know, like traditionally, like we do, like aqua. Now notice what happens when I save here and refresh, right? My background turns aqua. Well, I'm going to use this variable. So I'll delete that and I'll say var. And then remember it's the parentheses. And then inside of the parentheses, we just use the name. So dash dash bg for our background. And notice my background automatically turns dark, which is this color, right? So now whatever I set this to, this background will receive this variable update. So I can set this to FF0000 for red or any other thing that I want to. So for right now, I'll just set it to a light gray. We'll say, uh, I don't know, E, 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 E. So something like that. Right. Next, let's go ahead and set up some font uh, sizing. So I'm going to say font dash size. So again, traditionally, I could come in here and say like, you know, 60 points or something like that. Or I could do pixels, 40 pixels, et cetera, et cetera. But now I'm going to be using my uh, variable that I set up. So now we're going to say var and dash dash. We're going to be using our font dash dynamic dash size for the font size. So we've set that up like so. 
and we can come over here and refresh. Now, basically what's happening here is it's 16 times one point, right? So basically it's going to be 16 point, which is default. But I can come in here and what if I want to change this to two points? And let's save and refresh. And that didn't do what I expected here. And you probably already caught the issue, but I paused here and you can see I actually spelled this wrong. Font dash unite. So I got to remove that. So it says font dash unit. There we go. So now you can see I can set this back to one and I get my default font size here. And then I can set this to two and notice that it's calculating the 16 times two point. And that's really, really cool how you can combine this with a unitless measure with a unit that does have a measure to do this calc function here. So I'll set this back to two point and I can switch this to some other unit of measure. Like I can say two pixels and now it's 16 times two pixels. So anyway, really cool that you can do this. All right, so I'll set this back to points and I'm gonna set this back to one. So now that we have our body declared and we have this font size that's declared on the body, let's just go ahead and move down and uh, add one more little bit here. So now we're gonna add something to this first paragraph. So this first paragraph you'll remember is inside a paragraph that has a class of one. So when we come over here to our CSS, let's add a new class of one. And what we're going to be doing here is overriding the font size variable. So here I can say dash dash font size, font dash size. And I'm gonna set this to 32, okay? And then I'm gonna override this dynamic size as well. So I've gotta copy this down. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it back down into here. And then now we'll actually come over here and I'm gonna steal this line right here as well and redeclare the font size variable. And you can see now this second paragraph is overridden. So in other words, the, what I'm trying to get at here is that you can override uh, the original font size by just redeclaring a value inside of a specific selector and it's scoped to that individual selector. So that now this calculation, uh, this this uh, font size is only applicable inside of the one paragraph and not globally. So anyway, you can override your CSS custom properties just like so and maintain their scope. Okay, so let's do one more here. Let's go down to the three. So if you recall, we have over here, whoops, it's actually called two. So we'll say dot two. And inside of this one, we're just going to just to kind of prove the point here, we're going to say font size var, and then we're just going to declare that font dynamic size variable like so. And you can see that this font size on the second one is still at the default, right? It's still using this font size. But inside of the one, it's using a different font size because we redeclared the font size, but it's only inside of that class. Okay, the last little thing I'll show you here is that you can actually use CSS custom properties or variables as they're called, CSS variables, in line as well. So let's jump over here to our HTML. And we're gonna add this one directly to our third paragraph as an inline rule. So we'll come in here and say style equals, and then we can actually just go ahead and put in whatever we want right inside of that to override. So we'll just, add the property here. Now, all you do is you just simply declare it like so. You do dash dash, and you say font dash dine dash size. And I'll set this one to something like 55 pixels, uh, like that. So let's go ahead and refresh over here. And uh, whoops, I'm not actually seeing that being applied to the third one. Make sure I didn't mistype anything there. And the issue is actually I haven't declared a font size yet on this. So I can't override the font size if I haven't declared a font size. So let's come back here to the uh, CSS sheet and we'll just add a little rule down here for the three. We'll call this one three and we'll just copy this rule right here. This will work just fine. And we'll paste that down there. So now we're redeclaring that font size so we can refresh here. And now we can come in here to our HTML and let's give this the class of three as well. Class equals three. So that font size will be applied. And let's refresh right here. And now you can see we're actually getting that 55 pixels coming in. So now this has a font size and I can override the font size using a CSS variable 
So I can set this to whatever I want, right? I can say 15 pixels and refresh that or any sort of value just by redeclaring this font size. Now, this is a CSS exercise, so we're only looking at the CSS variables, but just so you're aware, you can also pass and manipulate CSS variables via JavaScript. So you can kind of see how I can really truly make this dynamic and modify properties of my website's visuals through JavaScript just by passing and using CSS variables and their varying attributes and values. So I hope you learned a tip along this lesson with the CSS custom properties, aka CSS variables.